that wanted families involved. Steve Spurrier at South Carolina, when I was here before, his wife, Jerry, was great about that. When I was at Oklahoma with Lincoln Riley, Lincoln was great about that. He wanted the kids involved. He wanted the kids. This is Sports Spectrum, bringing Jesus into the sports conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Shane Beamer, welcome to Sports Spectrum. How are you, sir? I am doing great. Hope you are as well. I am doing wonderful. Thanks for joining us here on Sports Spectrum. I thought a great place to start in our conversation might just be you describing what a typical day looks like for you out of season as we record this as compared to what it's like once the season begins. What are the parallels? What are sort of the rhythms that you have each day out of season, even though you're always preparing, versus yeah. in season when there are games every week to prepare for? Not a good question. It's a little bit more, uh, you know, flexible, maybe a little bit more time outside the office, you know, doing different things. Uh, you know, yesterday, uh, the last couple of days kind of is a pretty good snapshot. You know, yesterday morning, uh, woke up, I, I try and exercise regularly. So woke up uh, 530 yesterday morning, worked out for about 45 minutes and then uh Got on a plane, went to play golf with uh, two of our very best donors here that had invited me to join them, spent the day with them, had lunch, uh, went from there, got on a plane, flew to Sumter, South Carolina to speak to a Gamecock Club um, event, and then um, and then came back to Columbia late last night. And today, you know, woke up this morning and, and uh, took the kid, my three kids to school uh, which is always love to be able to do whenever I can. And then spent the rest of the day uh, uh, in the facility. We've got a couple of recruits that are visiting and, and whatnot. So every day is different, you know, out of season for me is one, as much family time as I possibly can. And then uh, two, the recruiting part never ends. So you're constantly recruiting, visiting with donors, speaking to booster clubs, things like that. So, so everything's cyclical in, in this profession and, or in this chair and uh, May's, uh, May's a fun time. And then it's a little bit slower for me because in the month of May, our assistant coaches are on the road recruiting. So uh, they're all gone and it's a quiet football facility, but a lot of work to get done as well. How about in season? Like what's a rhythm that you developed? It was your first year last year, obviously with the team, but in season, what was, what was that like in terms of preparation? And yeah, that one's just so much more structured because I can tell you, okay, if you ask me, Shane, what are you doing on Tuesday afternoon uh, during the season at 3.30, I could tell you. If you said, Shane, what are you doing on Wednesday night at 5.45, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day it's like Groundhog Day, uh, Sunday through Saturday. Um, you know, so for me, uh, like I said, I like to exercise regularly. So, I mean, I'm in the – I'm in the facility each day by, you know, 5.30, 6 a.m. every day and, and start the day with a workout just for me. If I don't do it then, I probably won't get around to it. And and uh, and honestly, it keeps me energized and things like that as well. So, you know, I get that done. I'm usually sitting at my desk by, you know, 6.45 each morning and, um, and then ready to get to work. And then each day of the week is different as you prepare for a game, prepare for the, uh, prepare for the opponent, you know, there's Sunday, there's Monday, there's Tuesday. And each day there's a process of what you have to get done along with the recruiting part of it, uh, as well, you know, so I'm certainly a morning person and get most of my work done as much as I can in, in, in the mornings. And then, you know, afternoons and evenings are, are still busy with football and recruiting and family and everything else as well. When you think about September 3rd at home against Georgia State, and obviously you get, you know, months and months to prepare for that game, but really preparing for the totality of a season, what gets you most excited about the opening game, but really about the upcoming season with this team you have? Um, well, just so much. One, it's a fun group to be around. Um, you know, we were able to uh, exceed expectations in 2021, and there's a lot of excitement about 2022 because of it. And, and I'm most excited. It's a, it's a fun group to be around. By no means are they complacent about anything that we may have accomplished last season. There's a great hunger and excitement to be even better. Uh, and they've been a fun group to be around since they came back here in January to start uh, off-season workouts. And then, you know, selfishly, I'm just a, a college football fan, and there's nothing like college football. So for the opportunity 
on September 3rd to be back in our stadium across the street, which is one of the premier home field atmospheres and environments in all of college football, of all of football in general, is something that, that I look forward to. Just uh, I know how excited our fans are about South Carolina Gamecock football, and I can't wait to get back in that stadium and feel that energy and feel that excitement uh, with them uh, here, here in uh, September. When did you realize you wanted to follow in, in dad's footsteps and become a coach yourself? Because that's something a lot of people who are, you know, children of coaches, some follow in that direction, others go different directions because they just were around it and saw it. When yeah. did you realize that this is something you wanted to do? Um, it's a good question. All, you know, always growing up, I kind of, I knew I wanted to be involved with sports somehow. And, um, uh, I don't know if there was this one moment it was just being around it so much my entire life i can remember growing up and and in the house we lived in growing up we had this huge field behind our house and i've got a younger sister she's four years younger and we had a bunch of friends in the neighborhood and, and i can remember even when i was probably 11 12 13 years old uh we had the old like Fisher Price headsets that you could wear. And I can remember at that age going up on the my family's deck that overlooked this field behind us. And I would put on like the Fisher Price headset and talk down on the field to one of the other coaches that was my other friend. And then we would like coach some of the neighborhood kids. So I mean, I can remember doing that at a young age. And and then as I got into college, became more and more serious. And like I said, I knew I wanted to be involved with with uh, uh, athletics somehow. And I finished up college. I had some opportunities outside the coaching world, but it was one of those, you know, I'm pretty certain I wanna do this coaching thing. And and I better, let me try this to make sure this is exactly what I wanna do. And if it's not, you know, well, at least I'll know, but I got in, started out as a graduate assistant back in the uh, uh, summer of 2000 and, and, you know, have never looked back. Do you remember the advice? I'm sure there were actually a lot of pieces of advice from your father, but the advice, one of the big pieces of advice that he maybe gave you as you began to pursue this profession? Um, no, I mean, if you asked him that same question, he would tell you that he looked at me and was like, are you nuts? You've been in this, you've been in this family your entire life. Like, you want to be a part of this? Because yeah. people don't, you know, you've been around it long enough and, and would remember this, but growing up, Virginia Tech, what it wasn't what Virginia Tech became with him as the head coach. I mean, mom, mom, Eighth grade year, Virginia Tech won six games. My freshman year in high school, Virginia Tech won five games. My sophomore year in high school, Virginia Tech won two games. And that was my dad's sixth year at Virginia Tech, my sophomore year in high school. So today's time, he would have been fired long before that sixth year. Yeah. Um, his seventh year was 1993. That was my junior year in high school. They won the Independence Bowl, and that was the first bowl game he ever went to. So I saw, like, the good and bad. It wasn't like I just – it was playing in major bowl games and, and all that like Virginia Tech was at the end of his career. I saw the bad primarily growing up. and But I also saw what an impact you, you're able to have on young people, uh, the, the way to you know still be involved in the game, the competition, all that. So I knew what I was getting into. I had been exposed to both extremes of, of college coaching for sure. And uh, so when, dad, when my dad says that, I mean, that's what he's alluding to essentially is there's so many – there's a lot of great moments in this profession. But there's a lot of really hard moments as well. And it's not easy on your family. Uh, but all he ever told me was really just understanding what a thin line it is between winning and losing. You know, I mentioned that 1992 season at Virginia Tech. I think they that they won two games that year. But in six of those games, if I'm not mistaken, going into the fourth quarter, they either led or they were tied with the opponent and they just couldn't get over the hump. But then the next year they won nine games and won the Independence Bowl. So just appreciating winning, realizing what a thin line it is between winning and losing. You know, I had seen that lesson, but then he just reiterated that. And, and then just like any other, whether it was me playing youth sports growing up or something in school, he and my mom would always tell me just whatever you, if you're gonna do something, do it to the very best of your ability. And uh, that's essentially the, advice he gave me and, and uh, attack this thing head on. And that's what I've tried to do, still trying to do. Shane Beamer is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. We are the intersection of sports and faith, Shane. I'd love to 
for you to share a little bit about the importance of the Lord and faith growing up and, and what it is in your life today. Yeah. Uh, certainly keeps me grounded, you know, and, 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 has, and keeps great perspective on, uh, um, everything that I'm doing. And I realize the impact that I can have in this chair, uh, as the head football coach at South Carolina and on not just the players in this program, that, but the, the people in this program, the coaches, the, the, the entire staff and, and the people that I'm, uh, ultimately in charge of here as the head football coach and, and the opportunity to have an impact on them. Um, you know, there's, there's so many, there's so many uh, highs and lows in this profession, but, but understanding that there's a, uh, someone that's in control of all of it. And, you know, that no matter how, uh, hard things get, um, uh, it's going to be okay. And just that, that day-to-day -day consistency, you know, my dad, I thought one of his great qualities was he never got, he never got too high or too low. And I've tried to, I hope I've taken that quality from him. And I think I do that. I just try and keep a positive out, outlook, positive mindset, stay consistent and, and not get too high and too low. And, and, you know, my faith allows me to do that. Was that something that was a part of you growing up to? Obviously, you're the son of a coach. So, you know, games were on Saturday and practices and lots of things happening. Was that something that was instilled in you from an early age, though? Yeah, um, it was. I mean, obviously, uh, um, you know, for me, it was you're in Blacksburg, you're a high school student and Virginia Tech loses on Saturday, you know, going into school on Monday wasn't always fun, you know, when yeah. you're. 15, 16 years old. So, right. you know, just realizing that, that um, um, there's good, there's bad. And, and, you know, for me as a son, just seeing how hard my dad worked and, and knowing that all the work that goes into three hours on Saturday. And, you know, it's crazy that ultimately I'm judged on three, on 12 Saturdays in the fall. Um, and obviously you're working the other, what, 353 days, a year for those 12 Saturdays, obviously, but, you know, certainly I saw that growing up and, and uh, that was definitely instilled in me growing up. So as a dad, because you're often called coach, even when you came on, I said, Hey coach, how are you? Right. But you're also a dad and a, and a husband. How, how are you, or how have you adjusted to being a head coach and even being in this coaching profession and still being able to make sure that, you know, keeping the main things, the main things, as they say, especially being a parent and being a dad, uh, what's yeah. that been like for you in this sort of, I think you told me your kids are 13, 12 and eight. Yeah. So those are pretty formative years right now. No, they are. Um, it's very, very important to me because, you know, my faith, my family and, and, and football are the three things that are most important to me. And, and you only get one opportunity to be a dad and, you know, people always talk about how fast kids grow up and, and all that. And it's true. I mean, it blows my mind that I've got a 13 year old right now about to be 14 that was born when I was an assistant coach here at South Carolina. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's, uh, it's crazy uh, to me. So I want to, um, I, I try and when you go back what you asked me earlier about my day to day schedule and all that, I mean, I, I certainly try and structure my day to where I'm not I, I don't have to miss things if I can, like even during the football season, if I can find time to sneak out of this office for 45 minutes to go watch my daughter play volleyball and then come right back to work, you know, being able to, to plan my day out where I'm able to do that and things like that. And, and then also I think, you know, keeping them involved or having them in, involved as much as I can. I never want them <clears throat> because this job is tough and there are a lot of hours that I have to spend away from them recruiting and different functions. I don't want them to ever, resent the job I have because I'm not because I'm not always there as much as I would like to be so I'm blessed that I'm able to be in a uh, a, a profession where I can include my kids in it where the players on our football team can come over to my house where I can uh my son or my daughters my wife whoever I mean if you come to one of our practices there's coaches kids here at every single practice uh if you come here to our football facility you typically see coaches kids running up and down the hallways um uh, mine included so having them here and having them involved in the locker room after the games things like that like I want to include them as much as I can and then it's been different now that I've been uh in this role here at South Carolina just because it's so much more magnified. Uh, 
you know, there's nowhere that I go in Colombia where uh, someone doesn't want to say hello, get an autograph, take a picture. And I love that part of it. You know, I yeah. love it that people want to do that, you know, but it's also, it's a little bit different for my kids because that's the first time they've really seen that, that magnified, but I've tried to do a great job. My wife and I, I'm just making them understand that, you know, just because I'm in a, in a high profile position, it doesn't make me any different than anybody else. You know, I'm just like anyone else. I just have to be, I'm in a position that I'm a little bit more recognizable because of the role that I'm in and, and trying to keep my kids uh, grounded from that standpoint as well. And, and I was fortunate that I was able to learn from a lot of coaches that included that wanted families involved. Steve Spurrier at South Carolina, when I was here before, his wife, Jerry, was great about that. When I was at Oklahoma with Lincoln Riley, Lincoln was great about that. He wanted the kids involved. He wanted the kids in the locker room after games, win or lose. Yeah. Uh, so it was great that I was able to see that and say, okay, you can still be successful um, and, and, and have, you know, be a great dad, be a great husband, and be a great football coach. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. And that sounds like that's part of the intentionality that you have as a coach of creating a certain kind of culture, which is a common, you know, that, that sort of buzzword that you hear, what's the culture like? Well, when we're winning, the culture is great. And when we're losing, the culture isn't great, but there's something about you as a head coach setting the tone, setting the culture within a program. And I have to imagine everything you just described as part of that. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we talk about family here a lot and, and uh, I think it's important when I say, that I want our families involved. I mean, I do for a lot of different reasons. One, I mean, it, 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 I don't want my assistant coaches, I don't want their wives resenting them because they're up here, you know, working a lot of hours. I want their kids to be able to come and, and whatnot. And I think it's great for our own players on our football team as well to be able to see us as not just coaches, but, but as, as uh, husbands and fathers also. And, and I've always been that way as an assistant coach. I mean, I'm sitting here doing this, uh, uh, recording this with you and, and I'm in my office and right around the corner, I've got a picture hanging on my wall of the tight ends that I coached at Oklahoma. Um, you know, after the, we beat Texas in 2020, it's a picture of us on the field after the game, because I had, you know, I love those guys deeply and care about them deeply. And even when I left here to, come here as the head coach of South Carolina, that was a hard conversation to have with those guys that I was leaving. And it was my kids. They couldn't understand that why we couldn't take Braden Willis and Jeremiah Hall and Austin Stogner. They couldn't understand, wait a minute, they don't get to come with us to South Carolina because those guys had been in my homes and, and my kids knew them and looked up to them. And to be able to uh, have those relationships is special for my kids to have those relationships with those guys is special. But then now that I'm a, the head coach, I get to have those kind of relationships with 119 players on my football team, which I absolutely love and, and cherish and, and, uh, and, and, and appreciate. So certainly we want that to be part of what this program's about. And, and, you know, when people, when recruits come visit us, that's the one word that always comes up is, is a, a genuine is the word that seems to always come up with moms, dads, players, whoever, that you guys are just so genuine here and, and you can tell that it's real. It's not an act. And, and I appreciate that because it is. I mean, we uh, the the the, uh, the the vibe, the energy, the culture, whatever you want to call it, the environment in this building day in, day out, it's it, it doesn't change. It's always the same and always will be as long as I'm the head coach here. So much of a coach's job is pouring into others, serving others, giving yourself of others. Who pours into you? I always like asking this to coaches because if you just empty your your tank every day, you know, you got to refill it with something or you're going to be burnt out or you're going to have nothing left to give. Who pours into you, whether it's spiritually from a faith perspective, whether it's just encouraging you, uh, who are some of the people that have helped you and are, are helping you each and every day? Yeah, uh, you know, certainly my hate, my faith helps and in, in that, um, uh, you know, I know I can always go, you know, somewhere for, to, to keep things in perspective and, and make me understand how blessed I am and how, thank, how, how fortunate I am to have this opportunity that, you know, there's a lot of tough moments in this profession, in this chair that I'm in, but uh, there's so many great moments and not losing sight and perspective of that, um, you know, trying to have a great work life balance and, and, you know, my wife would, would be the answer, you know, to that. 
Um, she's my wife, she's my best friend, and she certainly can keep things in perspective for me. And, and just being able to talk to her and, and having her come over, you know, during the football season and just sit down and have lunch for 20 minutes, you know, just to be able to shut the door to my office or probably not shut it. Cause it always is open. Cause you know, I want people to be able to come in here if they have an issue, but sure. But uh, you know, really for me, it's just trying to do a great job of when I, when I leave here, uh, the foot, the job doesn't end because of cell phones. I'm at home and I have to talk to, I'm, I get to talk to recruits and, and we're doing, I'm doing that at home and there's different issues that come up when I'm at home, but also when I am home, just trying to be uh, dad and, and, and not taking work home with me and being able to go home and, and just finding the time that, you know what, it has been a long day and I'm tired, but if I get the opportunity to sit down with my son and help him with his homework or spelling words or whatnot, you know, to cherish those moments and, and appreciate those as well, because they haven't, they haven't seen me during the day. And, um, you know, it's not always easy, but I think in the end, just having that balance where I'm able to, you know, get home and be around my kids and my wife and I love to exercise and we take walks together uh, every single day, especially in the off season, but as much as we can, you know, during the season, just moments like that. And they're not long, but just 30 minutes here, an hour there uh, are so meaningful. The goal is always to win as many games and win a championship. And that's that's kind of obvious, if you will. So I, I expect that to be part of the answer to this question that I might ask you. But outside of that, what do you what do you want to see take place this upcoming season for you, for your players, for the for the program? What do you hope for? Again, knowing that a championship is obviously the goal. Yeah, for me, it's it's and I always say this, and it sounds like cliche, but it's true, is I want to maximize the potential of the 2022 football team, whatever it is. Let's get the very most out of this football team that we, uh, that we can. Um, um, and, you know, it was uh, Gus Bradley, the former head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, and Gus Bradley told, you know, we were talking one time when he was with the Jaguars and he made the comment about victory, you know, and victory is being the very best that we can be. Uh, you know, something along those lines. And I feel the same way. Like, uh, to me, a successful football season, I'm not putting, a, you know, boy, I hope we win eight or hope we win seven. I mean, I'm looking at every game on our schedule and I expect to win. And, right. and we're doing everything in our power to win. Uh, but let's let's maximize the potential of this team. Let's get the very most out of this team on and off the field. Come together as a team. Uh on and off the field. And if you do that, the wins will come. And as we continue to uh, take each and every day and try and be the very best that we can be and develop the culture here in this program, those wins and then ultimately championships will come. And, and that's just what I'm striving to do each and every day and as, as the leader of this program and, and, and excited about doing it. Shane, last question. Uh, this is a question. Thank you so much for your time here. This is a question we ask all of our guests here on Sports Spectrum. I think it's a unique question because it makes you ponder a little bit and think where you are right now, where God has you, what have you been learning from him? What do you think is the greatest lesson that God is teaching you right now in the season of life that you're in? Hmm. Um, well, I always refer to Jeremiah 29, 11, um, you know, and like as a young assistant coach, I had all these great plans and all that. And here's where I'm going to be. And here's what I'm going to do. And just that's always been a great verse for me just to make me realize, you know what, just work really hard where you're at and, and everything else will take care of itself. Like God's got this and still, you know, refer to that now. And I think for me, the biggest thing I would say is just even growing up the son of a head coach, um, you don't realize all the things that come across or come in my office or come across my desk each day that aren't even like football X's and O's related. I mean, there's just so many other things about this job, uh, discipline, academics, fundraising, recruiting, on and on and on. Yeah. And um, um, realizing that where you got to do a good job of prioritizing things and just staying consistent for sure. Uh, and then just for me, really, it's realizing that as the head coach of this program, as the leader of this program, when I walk in this building each and every day, all eyes are on me. Players, coaches, 
staff and they're kind of going to go somewhat as as i go and you know that's not always easy especially on sundays after a game on saturday you know whether it's you had a huge win now we got to come back and and uh get ready to go again and do it again the following week or whether it's after or after it's a uh, really 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 hard loss the day before and we got to come back in here on saturday and rally the troops and get ready to go right back to work you know for the next week so um that's the thing that you know i've I've learned and and hopefully I've done a I've, I've, I feel like God's equipped me for that and, and still have a ways to go. But, you know, those are the you know a couple of things that stand out from that standpoint. Yeah, Shane Beamer. Thanks, Shane. This was great. Thanks so much for being here on the show. Best wishes before we know it. The football season uh, will be upon us and it'll be September 3rd. So excited for you and congratulations on all your success. And thanks for joining us. No, thanks for having me. Thanks for all the amazing things you're doing and hope to uh, hope to come on again soon. With you. Thanks so much for watching today on Sports Spectrum. Make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. And if you want more stories on sports and faith, check out our website, sportspectrum.com.